the Medal of Honor, the medal that I have around my neck, is a duty and a responsibility. And, and it doesn't belong to me. I'm representing 89 men that fought in the battle. I wear it for them. I put it in the back of my mind for so many years. When I talk about this, I have to put my feelings and my thoughts deep back into the back of my mind again and try to explain to you what it was like to be in that position. I know what John Whitehead was facing when he had to face those particular situations because I was there. I did the same thing that he did only a hundred years later. One out of every three men who fought here were part of the casualties of Stones River. When you had to think of one person taking care of that many casualties, it's almost unthinkable what John Whitehead faced on that particular three days of a battle. On this land, the 15th Indiana Infantry came through and John Whitehead was the chaplain for that unit. Forever and ever. Amen. I felt like he was in the same position as I was in as a combat medic in Vietnam. We were the same type of individual. We were human beings that were responsible for the well-being of these wounded soldiers. John Whitehead went forward to the front and helped the wounded and the helpless without any gun, and he carried them to safety. As a chaplain, he was responsible beyond the physical part of it. He also had the spiritual and the mental part of it that he had to take care of too. He was known as the Angel of Stones River. For his actions here, John Whitehead received the Medal of Honor. Vietnam War was the first time that medics actually carried a rifle. John Whitehead didn't even carry one, but both of us would end up without a weapon because of needing both hands to carry someone out or to work on someone. The first day, I had two wounded in action, two killed in action, and I killed my first enemy soldier. And I was frozen in place when I shot this human being. And Sergeant Hatton looked at me and he could sense that that had stunned me and he slapped me. And he said this, Doc, that's the way it's gonna be. Do you understand? It's either gonna be you or him. I didn't like to hear it, but it was the truth. I had, I had changed now from a a guy that came from the United States of America to a warrior in Vietnam, and that is, that's one of the rules. Either you go or they go. They brought in 13 helicopters. When we got there, it was a hot LZ, which meant the helicopters were being shot at. They wouldn't land on a hot LZ. They told us to jump. Had quite a few injured in that process. They shot two helicopters down. So we sent a squad out, and I noticed one man lagging behind. And it was Specialist 4 Bill Arnold. And here's an NBA squad coming online behind him to try and kill him. And I slid in next to him and said, where you hit? 
so I'm not hit. I hurt my knee jumping out of the helicopter. And I looked at his knee, it was about the size of a volleyball. And I said, well, you hang on to that weapon you got right there, you're going up on my shoulders. I threw him up, started swerving so that I'd be a moving target. And I could hear and see the bullets skipping off the ground next to us. So I got him in and they evacuated him out and the enemy backed off. What John Whitehead faced, he didn't have a helicopter to come in and take these wounded out like we did in Vietnam. We go out again and all hell broke loose. They had gotten hit by an ambush. And so I heard somebody yell medic. And that was my cue. I started towards them and I heard this explosion Behind me, it was a rocket propelled a grenade and the shrapnel had pelted the, my body from top to bottom. But you know, although it stung, I concentrated on what I had to do. I saw these two men. So I dragged them across that berm, got them into the trench line. I heard the word medic again and turned and went back towards the enemy. I went out four or five more times after that, that night. And in the evening when the enemy backed off, we were able to get in a medevac and get all of the wounded and the dead out. Lieutenant Carrier helped me get them on too. He said, get on doc. And I looked at him and that's when I remember I got hit and I looked down and I had my own blood all over me and I said, no, I'm not going. And he said, why not? And of course, I had this memory of the numerous amount of people coming down off of that hill. I said, you're gonna need me. And I thought by refusing to get on that helicopter that I'd just spent my last day on Earth. I wasn't finished with the job. I'd rather be dead in a rice paddy than alive in a hospital to find out that the next day one of my men got killed because Jim Clues wasn't there to do his job. In that battle alone, I saved 10 Americans and one Vietnamese interpreter from being either killed or captured. I got a letter in 2019. And it was a young man that said, you don't know me and I don't know you but you saved my grandpa in 1969. That was Bill Arnold, the first one that I ran out and brought back in. He said, um, I was born in 1991, and last week my wife and I had a baby boy. And this Sunday, I get to celebrate Father's Day because of you. And I read that to Cherie with tears in my eyes, my wife Cherie, and she said, Jim, you didn't save 11 people, you saved 11 family trees. And I had not thought of it that way. But that's what all of those who have fought for and will fight for our freedom. They will save family trees. My men, I had 10 men there at the ceremony that were in my unit. Five of the 10 I had saved. It's pretty unbelievable. It's almost surreal as you stand there and you realize that in a few moments, this particular item is gonna be placed around your neck. I would have never guessed at the time the duty and the responsibility that that would hold. So to look ahead, we have to look behind and remember what they did. I think it's important that we save this land so that no one will forget what John Whitehead did to help the individual soldiers who were wounded. Sorry. He, yeah, it's hard. Um, it's, it's hard 
because I know what I felt, and I'm sure he felt the same way. <laughs>